Hello, my friends. God bless each and every one of you. It is the 15th day of June, 2020. Um, it is late afternoon. I am off work. I'm back in my home, and I'm finally going to do a video uh, in the house that I have not done in a long time. Uh, most of my videos as of late have been in the car. Previous to that, I usually did my videos at home. So this is the first video I've done in a while back at the house, and I am absolutely pleased to be able to do this um okay i'm just going to get into this uh the last couple nights there's been a scripture that's bounced around my mind uh which i believe wholeheartedly that god laid this upon my spirit it says that if you um if you calm your spirit you quiet yourself down that's when god will speak to you the most and this scripture has came to me uh, over the last couple days and it has not left me so that's telling me that God wants me to pay attention to this scripture and I after reading it and after I bring forth this scripture to you my friends I think you will understand where I'm coming from especially with what's going on outside our, our doors within our cities and some within our very own communities that we live in. I'm going to try to bring this scripture into context with what's going on outside in the world today. I'm going to try to correlate it uh, with the Bible, with what's happening. So hopefully you'll be able to um, uh, get a little something out of this. I sure hope so, because I truly believe that this is... Um, Something the Lord absolutely wants me to get about, to get across to you all. This is from the book of Hosea. We are going to go into the 8th chapter, 1 verse. We're going to read the 7th verse of the 8th chapter of Hosea. And it says, follows, this is the King James Version. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield. The strangers shall swallow it up. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. That is the 8th chapter, King James, the book of Hosea, the 7th verse. They have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Where, at, where in history have we heard that before? That's been used at least one time in history that I can actually attest to, being that I am a military, sort of military buff. I spent time in the Army, and I've always, you know, followed uh, documentaries. I've read up on the wars. And I remember uh, in World War II, Winston Churchill used that very famously, I might add. They have sown the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. Now, he was talking about the Nazis in uh, World War II, the Germans in, in general, talking about they started this war. They have, you know, put so much misery upon, uh, at that time, Europe. And they are going to pay the consequences for their actions. Now, let's go forward into 2020. Why has God put the 8th chapter of Hosea, the 7th verse, on my mind, within my spirit the last couple days? Why has he done... What is going on today within these continental United States of America? What is happening today? right now and in the recent past that would bring that scripture into fruition bring it into uh usage well, what is going on well we all know exactly what's going on outside in some of our major metropolitan cities and that's chaos that is utter chaos what they call anarchy Anarchy is no law, no following of any form of governing, of any form of government, government of any form of, of, of law, rules of any type that society would lay down. 
to follow none of that. It is total and utter anarchy. In other words, whatever you want to do is fine. What goes, what, what, what happens, whatever happens is whatever happens. That's what these people are promoting. Total chaos or anarchy. Now, we're seeing a lot of this happen throughout our cities. Uh, there's been one uh, police officer with three others that had one look uh, in Minneapolis that really was absolutely just deserves to be put in prison for the rest of his life for what he did. No doubt about that. Not even going to question that. Not even going to even go down that path. But from that one man's action, we have caused within the last couple weeks so much chaos so much anarchy in this country that it is unbelievable. And now we are seeing what Hosea chapter 8 verse 7, what God is talking about. These people have sown the wind and shall reap the whirlwind. Who is the question we must talk about? Who is going to be the ones that is going to reap the whirlwind? Now, Logic would obviously tell you it would be them, the ones that are currently causing the chaos. But the Bible tells us clearly that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So I don't quite think that is the case in this matter. I think America as a whole is going to suffer from this, what we're seeing today, because it is far from over. Listen. Let's just make one thing clear before I go any further into this video, and that is what's going on within our media, what's going on within the Democratic Party that is kowtowing to these people in these cities that are doing this looting and burning and taking over of things. It is a simple fact they want to cause as much grief and as much chaos so in hope that they won't have to put up with four more years of President Trump. Let's just make, make this clear, okay? What these people are doing, this has nothing to do with George Floyd. Nothing. They might use that as an excuse, but it has nothing to... It, how does burning a building down, looting a Target store, taking over city blocks assassinating police officers, what does that have to do with mem the memory of George Flo Floyd? It has zero to do with it. It is just another excuse for these godless, what I call godless reprobates, to take charge and show that they are truly the ones that rule the streets. Now, of course, we're talking about defunding our police departments, removing police from our streets. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, you are not stupid. I realize that or you wouldn't be. You're not dumb people. You know as well as I do, if you remove police from any one of these major metropolitan cities within these United States of America, you haven't seen chaos yet until that happens. I mean, look at the murder rate in a lot of these cities. My city of Baltimore it's a drug-infested murder hole, okay? But I want to get back to Hosea 8, 7. Who's going to reap the whirlwind? Well, I believe we are. I believe America as a whole, not everybody, obviously, because there's still a lot of good praying Christians in this nation, but there's twice as many godless people, atheists, non-believers, Christ deniers, that's in this nation. So, I believe that America in whole, from turning its back on God for so long, especially with the decision today that the Supreme Court made, it just came down not long ago. I'm not going to get into it. You can Google it and look it up yourself. It's another strike against God. What the decision they came at today is just another smack in the face of the Holy Bible and God and what Christians stand for. You know, marriage between a man and a woman. I'm not going to go into the great details because I know YouTube will pull my channel quicker than I can snap my fingers. It's, it's not, I'm not stupid. I know how they are. They're just waiting 
for, for people like me to say something that they deem racist or, you know, uh, hate-mongering or something along them lines. But I truly believe God put this scripture on my mind again because I think what we're seeing in America correlates completely to what is happening from that scripture, what's happening in the streets right now as, as I'm speaking. I don't think it's going to get any better. As a matter of fact, I think in some cases it's going to it's going to absolutely deteriorate because the president eventually is going to have to take these streets back over. He cannot let these people run rampant because when you let them continue to take over that city, those blocks or what part of the city, then that just gives uh, other ones in other cities, it just emboldens them to sow the wind in those cities and to take over blocks or sections of those cities. And so more wind, and America will reap more of the whirlwind from all of this. Uh, I really believe that that scripture absolutely was laid on my heart for a reason. And, uh, you know, I believe America right now is at a turning point. I do believe that. I believe we are in a spiritual warfare of the likes we've never seen before. Some people talk about, oh, well, this went on in the 60s. Yes, that was a protest against a war. A little bit different. Some civil rights protests. That was major, too. But this is a whole different kettle of fish, my friends. These people literally want to do away with capitalism. They want to cut capitalism out from its root and completely remove it from the United States of America and replace it with the single most murderous form of governing that this world has ever seen. And that's communism. Now, yes, they might fancy that up by calling it uh, socialism. And they might even fancy it up a little bit more by putting the word democratic in front of the word socialism. But the bottom line is it's communism, no matter how you cut it. And if America doesn't turn back to God, my friends, we are going to reap a whirlwind like we've never seen before. I am not taking any pleasure of making this video at all. I want the nation that I was born in. I want the nation that I served in the army for. I want it to be prosperous. I want it to... to to, to revere God. I want it to go to church. I want it to get back to its roots. Not go down the path that it's going. And, and I'm afraid it's not going to be a good path as I just said. My friends, that's all I got for you today. Um, I appreciate all my subscribers. I pick up one or two here and there. And it just makes my heart so... It just fills my heart with so much joy when I get a notification that somebody subscribed. It's wonderful. I know other people get thousands of subscribers, tens of thousands, even into the millions. And that's fine. That's fine. Most of those are, you know, entertainment purpose channels or whatnot. And that's fine. You know, uh, but even when I get one subscriber, I'm so full of joy and happiness. So to the few people lately that's joined, thank you. I mean it. I'm not joking. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day. Be safe out there. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.